Okay, I'm gonna give it a few seconds before I do it again. If it does fucking disconnecting shit. Give it a few seconds. Alright, it's back to normal. Fuck you, Streamlabs. Stop being a bitch. Oh shit. Oh shit. Also, 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 guess what? Guess what? What? I'm about to keep reading SCP. What? Happy New Year! Yeah, we we get it. Oh. Anyway. When approximately 50 laws from the SCP-2079-A 2079 have been ratified, SCP-2079-B will begin to manifest, typically remaining within 20 kilometers of the seat of the affected organization. SCP-2079-B is a large quadrupedal creature covered in stiff black hairs. It has a long snout containing powerful jaws and does not possess visible eyes. It is surrounded by 29 animate levitating hands which appear human and seem to have been served se uh, severed at the wrist these protect and manipulate objects for scp-2079-b and are believed to be under its direct control scp-2079-b can only be inter interacted with as specified with as specified by those instances of SCP-2079-A currently in force, indicating that it it is the cro Crocundus. In other circumstances, SCP-2079-B is intangible and, and unaffected by all obstacles. When in accordance to SCP-2079-A, SCP-2079-B has demonstrated several other anomalous capabilities, including mass hypnosis, extreme strength, and production of large quantities of wine. Certain laws in SCP-2079-A specify punishments should the Crocundus fail to abide by them, the worst of which appears to be dispersal, which immediately ends the SCP-2079 manifestation. Although SCP-2079-B shows signs of sapience, it is never communicated and all its actions seem to be seem to be to ensure it remains in accordance with SCP-2079-A. From the from when SCP-2079-B appears to when it, it is dispersed, authorities will become very resistant to repelling SCP-2079-A. It is unknown what would happen if SCP-2079-A were ratified in full. I would say country. Yeah. 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 And honestly, potentially could be worse than country, depending on where this shit shows up. Yeah. Right country. I still don't get why the picture is just a fucking little Pac-Man Pac -Man ghost. ghost. Yeah. That was never explained. And now I guess we'll never know. Oh my god, Bright, when did you when did you fucking rename yourself into only births? <laughs> a while ago. She's... Right when I made yeah, that she's joke. Been having that. Oh. Oh, this one. Oh, this this is one of my favorite SCPs. Is it more, if I'm not mistaken? Is it better than the dinosaur one? No, not not even close. <laughs> you still really love that one where motorcycles no, where, who where doesn't, motorcycles become velociraptors. <laughs> who, who doesn't love the prospect of dinosaurs possessing <laughs> things that their bones have been used? to fuel yeah does anyone here oppose that idea <laughs> not really no it's really i cool. do not i do not hear any oppositions therefore the, that scp is officially the best scp i, I love I how it won't work but okay yeah i love <laughs> how it's also called nicknamed jurassic park yeah 
<laughs> anyway, SCP-2086, also known as rerouting. SCP-2086 is a species of anthropod that resembles very various makes, models, and brandings of public transport vehicles, typically buses. Care if you say that. What, booses? Just add a Y at the wrong spot. Oh, for fuck's sake, Hatchet. There was that one bus company that, like, made their mascot have that name. Bussy? <laughs> Hatchet! I'm not... <laughs> I thought Hatchet said it first. Bussy. Dragon, no. Bussy. Shut up. Dragon, no. You're Violence not allowed to child. say it. Dragon. No dragon. It's bus. It's a bus. And you had a Y. It's bus. They've already taken it down. Because yes. they because they realized how much of a massive fucking mistake it was. <laughs> you're not gonna You're not gonna get away with saying it as if you can say it without everyone here knowing what you're talking about. Yeah. Shut your face. I wasn't even yeah. talking about anything inappropriate. Yeah, so what the point is the okay. Anyway. Go to your room. I'm in my room. Go well, to the gulag. Shoe, if you want to mute them, the go gulag. ahead. Well, Chu's not around. No, Chu said, why are, you, are, you, are we allowing Dragon to speak? Oh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> also. Why does Dragon still have First Amendment rights? What the fuck? <laughs> Just remember, Pika is a grouchy Chu. Anyway, uh, continuing on with the SCP. Uh, mature SCP-2086 instances weigh firstly... 17,000 kilograms. Although this number can vary greatly, juveniles typically weigh less than 200 kilograms. Newborn specimens of SCP-2086 can be expected to grow to full size within one week. On average, SCP-2086 specimens live 12 to 15 days, with females producing up to 20 offspring after reaching reproduction age and approximately 8 days. Mature instances of SCP-2086 do not feed, instead living off of nutrients consumed as juveniles. However, only mature instances of SCP-2086 display foraging behaviors. When foraging, SCP-2086 are almost indistinguishable from standard automobiles, although closer examinations reveal the steel, wood, plastic, and glass to be a specialized form of chitin. Uh, vital organs such as the heart, brain, and stomach are stored beneath the flooring of, of SCP-2086 inner chamber. A human corpse preserved in a shellac-like substance typically serves as a decoy driver of wild SCP-2086 instances. Fibrous appendages protrude into the corpse SCP-2086. Uh, uh. Instances use these fibers to manipulate the gorps, providing a more lifelike appearance. SCP-2086 instances can unravel their roofs into wings, which are capable of lifting the entire organism into flight, which is their standard method of loco locomotion when not foraging. In addition, the wheels can unravel into long gray or black legs, while the headlights appear to serve as bioluminescent optical organs. Mm -hmm. The appendages of SCP-2086 instances are abnormally apt at fine manipulation when compared to other species of arthropod. Species have been observed building crude shelters with the materials located at their nesting grounds. SCP-2086 typically nest in abandoned junk and scrap yards. Juvenile instances in the wild have been observed removing bus stop signposts and relocating them, typically in, in a route that leads back to the local colony. Accidental civilian observation of SCP-2086 instances engaging in this activity is minimized due to the significant, significant smaller size of juvenile specimens. The mature instances of SCP-2086 will, dr will drive along that route laid by the juveniles, picking up human passengers, 
with a significant number of humans board an instance of SCP-2086. The organism will release a substance similar to chloroform to incapacitate its prey. Upon returning to the colony, juvenile SCP-2086 instances will enter the mature instance's internal chamber. Each passenger is then forcefully removed from the mature inside by a juvenile. The juvenile SCP-2086 instance will proceed to force the human through a sphincter located under the under hood, linking to where the steering wheel and driver's seat is typically located in mature specimens. Once consumed, hair-like appendages attached to the driver's seat will, will pierce the trapped human body. These appendages serve as feeding tubes, draining blood from the prey. Once the prey has been drained of blood, the feeding tubes will begin to secrete a saline solution into the corpse. The internal compartment will then begin to fill with a shellac-like substance preserving the corpse. And there you go, that's the SCP. Fucking nightmare creatures. So be careful which bus you get on. No, no, no. <laughs> Jerry's like, no. No. I wonder if... Oh, no, yes, be careful, but... Uh, I, uh... This is obviously the reason why uh, large-scale public transportation is not a major thing in America. Because everyone's scared of the bus creatures. <laughs> I'd say certain groups. Yeah. Yeah. Fun fact, I'm the bus creature. Fuck off. Go to, go to the gulag. I, um... I know there's a function within Discord where you can send a person to a voice channel and they can't leave. Well, I mean, they can really? disconnect, but when they reconnect within any voice chat, they'll be put right back in that voice chat. That... I, I know it's a function, I just don't know how to do it. <laughs> it's a calendar. You don't know how calendars work? Shut the fuck? That's, that's not what I was saying. Anyway, he says certain groups, everyone in agreement. Mm hmm Yeah. I feel like out of... Out of all of the certain groups gets put in the most SCPs. Yeah. That's the thing. The majority of SCPs aren't going to destroy the world. It's just that a large portion of them uh, are dangerous to a certain degree. And most of the time, that's going to be to a certain number of people. And some of these are just dangerous to themselves. Yeah. Like I think one of the cre like one of the things that makes SCP scary is that in many ways a lot of SCPs kind of operate similarly to how you would expect a serial killer to operate. Oh yeah. Like, like it's not going to destroy an entire society, but it is still incredibly horrifying, and there's a lot of people that are going to get fucked over. Yeah. Anyway, the next SCP is. SCP-2098, St. Simon's Day. St. Simon's Day. SCP-2098 is most easily understood as a furuluent fer, fer, holiday. A furry holiday? V-I-R-U-L-E-N-T. Furry holiday. Shut up. Oh, oh my god. V virulent. 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 SCP-2098 is Furry a... <laughs> Shut up. SCP-2098 is the cumulative reference of for a series of... Cumulative. Anom cumulative. Cumulative. Shut up. <laughs> Nomalous <laughs> phenomenon and behaviors which overwrite existing human reception of a calendar date with the belief that the day is in question is a holiday designated St. Simon's Day. In, pr in practice, SCP-2098 behaves... Wait, fuck, I lost my place. Behaves in a manner roughly 
analogous to pathogen affecting human perception of the calendar date through self-replicating SCP-2098 events. These events alter human perception of the date to varying degrees in order to sustain existing perceptive anomalies and or propagate further events. It is theorized that without intervention, 100% of the human population would perceive and celebrate St. Simon's Day every calendar day within 26 years, resulting in a XB class perceptive restructuring scenario. Today, all communities. Wait, huh? What the fuck does that mean? I think what that means is that. In, it, it would It'll change the, the entire structure yeah of humanity of society yeah pretty much just society change the structure of society from what i remember okay. reading about that everyone fucking starts celebrating some random saint that i'm not even sure exists yeah Today, all communities experiencing an SB 2098 event have been located in American held states and territories which do not reserve daily daylight savings time. I wish I was one of those states. And, and have been in existence as distinctive civic en entities no longer than January 1st, 1969. Communities meeting the, these criteria are designated prime susceptibility communities. There, are cur there is currently no evidence of an SB-2098 event occurring prior to 1969. The research is ongoing to determine if SB-2098 effect is new and unique only to this geographic legislative region, or if it exists, has existed with differing parameters elsewhere. No events have thus far only taken place in, the in this limited range. SCP-2098 red vectors can easily transmit infection to communities and individuals outside this zone. Due to foundation intervention, no documented infection has yet taken root outside of a brine susceptibility community. SCP-2098 phenomenon proceed along a currently predictable corpse. Uh, course, not corpse. Corpus. Oh God, <laughs> a predictable corpse. <laughs> I don't know why oh, my. Yeah. I don't Actually, know. So, I don't that way. so it's a zombie. Yeah, it's I right. predict. I I mean, when you get right down to it, like I think most corpses are pretty predictable. Like, like you just see a corpse and you like you can just like, yeah, that bitch is gonna stay right where it is. Unless Maybe you're get a <laughs> counter system. Counter yeah, true. Counter argument. J.K. Rowling. <laughs> Fuck, you're right. J.K. Oh Rowling has a mortis. Yeah. Anyway. Phase one. Hey, oh, sorry. J.K. Rowling was the Death Eater all along. Shut up. Anyway, <laughs> phase one. <laughs> SCP-2098 will begin to manifest in a target community through altered uh, advertising for a local gathering. This will invariably include some in iteration of the phrase St. Simon. Targeted events are always community-wide in scope, with no formal in invitation required. SCP-2098 will progressively co-opt such a community event over the course of 2 to 30 days. At this phase, only a single media outlet may be affected and the naming convention may not yet be consistent or logical. Phase 2. 48 hours after the event date, all promotional materials for the event will alter to include consistent iteration of St. Simon in their title. In addition, the venue will, will be consistent across these materials, and they will specify a duration of 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. without exception. Widespread receptive anomalies will first manifest in the affected community during Phase 2, with 100% of residents possessing accurate but unsourced knowledge of the event date, duration, venue, and name. There appears no accompanying compulsion to attend the event dis despite this knowledge. Unless the venue is rendered un unavailable, a scheduled community gathering will take place in accordance with the time and date indicated on the SCP-2098 altered media. The venue disruption is the only current, currently proven means of preventing an SCP-2098 event. 
Phase 3. At 12.01.01 p.m. on the confirmed date, an SCP-2098 event will enter Phase 3. All persons within designated community event boundaries will cease voluntary movement for precisely 16 minutes and 16 seconds. Non-human life is not affected by SCP-2098 events. If observed at a range closer than 15 meters during this time, the observer will enter the event battery boundaries and be affected accordingly. Although close-range medical tests are not possible, viewing from a from minimum safe distance indicates that SCP-2098 affected individuals, individuals continue to respirate and blink normally for a duration of the stasis. <coughs> Sorry. Mild to moderate physical interaction from a non human entity or outside force will break the stasis, causing the affected individual to fall prone and collapse into a fully unconscious state that will last until the cessation of the event at 12 17 17 p.m. local time. Phase 4. At 12 17 17 p.m. local time, the event enters phase 4. All infected individuals will leave stasis and return to their homes by whatever means they arrive at the venue. While affected individuals will not violently resist attempts to interfere with their return to, to their homes, should one individual affected by SB 2098 be detained, and the remaining affected subjects will come to their aid and attempt to remove whatever persons or obstacles are preventing the individual from returning to their home. Phase 5. The final phase of SCP-2098 event transitions the affected populace with two distinct vector classes. Within six hours of the return to their homes, if prevented from returning to their homes, vector classes manifest within one to two hours, making community inventory and maintenance far more practical if the populace is permitted to return to their homes during phase four. This is current SOP for non-disrupted events. Yeah, there you go. That's the SCP. Countries. My back. Maybe? But, like, oh it, doesn't, it doesn't harm people. It just makes people celebrate the holiday. It's, uh... I would say world-changing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it changes. The world. Oh, Pokemon says Saint Simon is a real saint. Oh, yep. okay. I totally knew that. I am totally uh -huh. right. being truthful. I am a hundred percent not lying. All right, so the next one is gonna be a picture of the sun again. Here comes okay. the sun. Do, 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 do. Here comes there you go. That's the sun. Da, da, da. That is not the sun. How do you know it's not the sun? You want to see? Because the sun is the not a blue dwarf. Are you calling? Are you not letting the sun be their true colors? Hatchet, is that what you're doing? Are you Are you judging the frost giant for not being giant? Hmm? <laughs> what? Okay, ignoring the <laughs> stupid shit that just came out of the child's mouth. And bright the sun, <laughs> the sun does not. The sun is not currently a blue dwarf that we know of. We haven't seen no, the inside of its outer have layers. You... <laughs> we actually have, right? If it's, it's if it's blue. a blue dwarf, then it would be apparent <laughs> from where we are. Have you gone outside during the day and seen the sunlight as blue? Yes. Do you think she goes outside? You're lying. She doesn't go outside. <laughs> you want to see? You want to truly That's... see the sun? You want to see my sun? Here's my sun. He runs the cult. You wanna see my son? Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, it's Chew. Hi, Chew. Hey, Chew. Pika. Mm. Welcome to the chaos. Lord, mm. that... Right, what the hell did I just hear you say? <laughs> <laughs> the, the inner astronomy nerd in me just <laughs> ripped all of it. 
just ripped all of their hair out. Like, all, you have all of hair? it. Pika, why are you surprised about anything here at this point? Right, you re you realize that if the sun were blue, it would be significantly bigger and hotter, and we would all be dead, and or just not here. Not if we were on Mars. Right, you you underestimate. Do you know how big stars are? Here is my sun. <laughs> I can't wait to see Hatchet's son. That is my son. Anyway, oh, you're saying your too. son is orange. This hurts. <laughs> Chew. What the fuck did you send me, Dragon? What the fuck is this? <laughs> if you just got it now. <laughs> well, I didn't Don't just get it now. I just didn't open it. From the child. I like how everyone now is cutting off Chew from speaking. The fucking poke bong. <laughs> I don't really have anything to say other oh. than that one astronomy comment filled me with irrational rage. <laughs> I can see that. Is it either is it irrational or is it rational? Yeah. Both. Because I am irrational by nature. Okay. Tell me whether or not Chu is being irrational. Are you asking your cat? Yes. Is anyway. your cat going to speak to you? Well, it I do is... think your cat is probably more rational than Bra uh, After After meeting with the council, I've come to the conclusion that Chu is, in fact, irrational. Thank you. Anyway... Let's go go ahead and continue with the SCPs. <laughs> well, I I looked into I looked into Festus's eyes, and Festus's eyes said, "Put me the fuck down." So I assume that that was affirmation that she was irrational. Yeah. Anyway, go the next the SC, ah. next SCP is twenty one hundred, also known as Tripwire. Ooh, fun. SCP-2100 is a large subterranean complex believed, believed extraterrestrial in origin. SCP-2100 extends approximately 7,390 7, meters below ground with S-2718 levels and has approximately four area of uh, 738,905,600 uh, square meters geological analysis of the surrounding rock indicates that SCP-2100 was constructed 1.253 billion years ago in its current position small scale fissures indicate that the antarctic techno tectonic plate has been partially fractured as a result of sliding around SCP-2100 research in 19 redacted confirmed that SCP-2100 perpetually broadcasts a dense steam of neutrinos toward the center of the Earth, which is then redirected at Earth's core through unknown Wait. means. Hmm? Wait, spell out what you just said? N-E-U-T-R-I-N-O-S. That's neutrons. That's not neutrons. That's not neutron. That N E U T I no N N E U T R I N O S. Right? Are you drunk? Neutrinos. Okay. Neutrinos. Yeah. So it was right. Yeah, I did say it oh, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Neutrinos shit. are different than neutrons. Oh, okay. Yes. I I I I I fucked up. I apologize. First time ever, Hatchet fucks up on my stream. <laughs> this is not the first time ever. <laughs> also, did they take... Oh my fucking god, these bitches. Anyway. What? What? They took Hades off of the Google Game Pass. Not Google, fuck, the Xbox. What the fuck? Probably is in a new game. But anyway... 
regardless of Earth's relative position and orientation, this beam maintains focus towards a fixed coordinate point located within the center bulge of the Milky Way galaxy. SCP-2100 has been fully mapped with three primary features designated SCP-2100-1 through 3. Dash 1 is an area comprising parts of floors 25 through 29. It contains a con concentration of displays, readouts, and input controls. Conduits throughout the entire complex join the junction relays and, and all eventually terminate at Dash 1, indicating that that is the control center of the entire complex. Displays in Dash 1 are dead and unresponsive. Alright, just type it up to you. I'll look at it later. Dash 2 is an area comprising parts of the lowest 271 levels. It is the source of the Torino transmission beam. It is believed to hold an immense focusing mechanism which di directs neutrinos produced by Dash 3 into a beam 270 meters in diameter with an average neutrino density of 27 quadrillion neutrinos per square centimeter. There is so much scientific talk. Yeah, it, 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 these are that you, you don't fully get, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dash 3 is perfectly spherical section comprising the central sections of levels uh, 1,223 and 1,495. Hmm? Do you say something? I said bless you. Somebody, ah. somebody sneezed. I didn't sneeze. I made a sound at food because they made they did wish wish wish. Yeah. Anyway, there are several hundred shutter transparent viewing apertures located along the equatorial belt of Dash Three. When unshuttered, these apertures allow limited filtered wavelengths of visible light to pass through. Visual indications show that Dash Three houses what appears to be a miniature neutron star, designated Dash Four. Dash 4 is an estimated 400 meters in diameter with a rotational period of 0.5 ms. Gravimetric and electromagnetic readings do not pick up any usual activity near the vicinity of Dash 4. Either Dash 4 does not produce gravitational or electromagnetic fields, or Dash 3 effectively blocks them. In addition to the primary facilities, uh, SP-2100 also houses a small section believed to be abandoned alien living quarters, several large uh, cavernous rooms of unknown purpose, and approximately 2.71 billion meters of conduit connecting Dash 1, Dash 2, and Dash 3. Alright. Oh, a message from the 05 Council. Uh, we didn't. Huh? We didn't hear like uh, the end of that. God damn well, it! At least I didn't. In addition to the primary facilities, SCP-2100 also houses a small section believed to be abandoned alien living quarters, several large ca cavernous rooms of unknown purpose, and approximately 2.71 billion meters of conduit connecting dash one dash two and dash three anyway now for the message from the o5 that will probably help us with this scp on december 4th 1994 the 5 council issued a top priority order to site redacted directing senior personnel to focus all efforts on interrupting the stream of neutrinos emanating from SCP-2100. Since neutrinos pass through nearly all solid matter, extreme measures were necessary to interrupt the beam. On uh, October 17th, 1996, Site Director Redacted had made a formal request to the O5 Council asking uh, permission to use SCP Redacted. The request detailed a plan to recreate, uh, the plan to create a spatial anomaly which would redirect the Torino stream away from the Milky Way galaxy toward Galaxy 3C252, which lies near the edge of known space. 
Two months later, O5 Council approved the request. On May 19th, 1999, SCP Redacted was activated within SCP-2100, creating a bend in space-time to redirect the neutrino stream. Immediately, neutrino stream ceased, neutron star within S2100-1, being clo close to monitors, slowed from a rational period of 0 0.5 ms to 500 ms. At the exact moment of interruption, reports began coming in from civilian and foundation observatories all over the world. 226 supernova were observed to e erupt throughout the Milky Way. 34 new black holes were discovered, and 11 previously documented stars disappeared with no trace. Most activity was centered in and around the center bulge of the Milky Way galaxy. None of the activity posed any threat to Earth. Efforts to reinstate the neutrino stream have been unsuccessful. Requests by site director redacted to reclassify event Omega 2100 as an XK scenario and utilize reality entering reality altering SCPs to retroactively prevent event Omega 2100 have been denied. So, um, yeah, that happened. It's easy to place. Yeah, apparently we created a bunch of black holes and supernovas by stopping the beam. Very good. Very, very, very good decision there, folks. That was, uh, that, that was a damn good job everyone did there. Would it go in XK or ZK? XK. XK. It's not going to destroy the universe. Oh, I put in ZK by yeah. accident. Whoops. You dingus. <laughs> I was about to say, what are you doing? Wait, we only have one SCP left for this list. Oh, my back. Oh, my God. We are we... We're at the end? Oh, yes, wait, and then... finally. Then we and can make that... a list that only has, like, 30. So it's not as big. And then does that mean that the stream will end? Or Yeah. And it'll what only be we... an hour ahead of schedule. But pop, what if we but... spent the last hour playing Jackbox? No. That'd be pretty fun. Yeah, that'd be fun. I I don't want to push my computer beyond its limits already. To be honest. Yeah. That's fair. Wait, <laughs> your computer might end up like the the meme I said, but for real this time. <laughs> Shush. Anyway, what meme? Oh wait, yeah, now I remember. The stream planning one. Momo yeah. called me out of pocket. Next SCP is SCP-2112 and the meek shall inherit the earth. Okay. What does meek mean? No. You don't you, that's a that's a that's a phrase that came straight from Jesus, and you don't know what it means. No, I haven't read it by one in like a couple of years. Sorry. <laughs> I thought you were supposed to be religious. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't mean I read the Bible every day. Meek is one of the main words there. I'm sorry. Bright continues to ceaselessly disappoint us. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's great. I had American right? education. What do you expect? I um, better than I better than this. Than you are gonna still work. <laughs> Your American please, education please should have included this. Dude, quiet, passive. I've never taught what Meek is in school, so I'm sorry. I'm gonna hurt you. <laughs> Why? Don't hurt her. I'm just sitting How here. You know what is? Good point. Pika, help me. Why? Because <laughs> you're my mod. So, so Shiri. I'm one of your mods. I feel like strangling you. I won't, but I, I feel like <laughs> I do. Anyway, Hatchet Key, mind describing what Meek means? Jerry just did. Oh, I was I, I was just too busy paying attention to Jerry yelling at me. Submissive, subdued, quiet. Oh. oh, okay. 
something that Jerry is not feeling up to being right now. <laughs> I'm going to continue I sitting exactly here. I wouldn't exactly call myself a meek person. Yeah, no, no, you're chaos. not. Chaos. <laughs> anyway, I'll read the SCP now. Right. Fucking... Oh, God, that hurts my head. Sorry. SCP-2112 is a memetic phenomenon associated with Karis of Steel, a record album released in 1975 by the Canadian progressive rock band Rush. SCP-2112 is not present on the original master recordings or, in, or on most common commercial releases of the album and is known to manifest only on three limited release editions. A quadrophonic mix of the original LP issued in 1975, a digital remastered issued on SACD in 1999, and, and a high fidelity remaster issued on LP in 2011. Reproductions or copies of affected discs do not produce SCB-2112 phenomena, and Audio examination of affected discs have detected no distinguishable differences from non-anomalous recordings other than artifacts caused by the remixing or mastering process. SCP-2112's primary anomalous effects manifest when an infected disc is listened to in its entirety by a person who identifies him or slash herself as a fan of the music rush and possesses any level of experience in playing the electric guitar, electric bass, or drums. Oh, oh no, oh no. It's oh, electric no. bass. Oh no. Bass? <laughs> Sorry, I read it as the fish. <laughs> I don't know why. The bass is my favorite what? musical instrument. <laughs> why would? Especially when you play it. The fish the and the bass. instrument is spelled the same. Why would that, why would a suck reference to a fish come up in this content? <laughs> I'm sorry. I love... Uh, I did not write bass. this. I did not write this SCP. Why would there be a random <laughs> reference to a fish? Shut up. He's anyway. very smart, okay? Let me just continue, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Exposed individuals will, will become obsessed with the idea of establishing a tribute band dedicated to, to performing cover versions of the music of Rush in public, regardless of their level of musical experience or current occupation or memberships in other bands, and will attempt to seek out two other 2112 infectees for that purpose. 2112 infectees have been noted to go to any lengths available to achieve this goal including resigning from their job, relocating to another part of the world, selling off major possessions in order to acquire instruments or equipment, or deliberating exposing others to 2112 in an attempt to create potential bandmates. In the event that three infectees are successful in establishing a group, they will begin to seek out any venue that will allow them to perform in public and will do as so as often as possible, performing sets composed entirely of the music of Rush in their original arrangements. The music produced by 2112, in fact, these during live performances additionally serves to propagate SCP-2112 to any persons exposed to it. In this form, transmission of SCP-2112 occurs much more re readily than in person exposed to the source disk with any person who identifies as a fan of the music of Rush potentially becoming infected, whether or not they possess any musical skill after approximately 15 to 20 minutes of exposure. Testing with D-Class personnel indicated that even individuals with no prior familiarity with Rush and only rudimentary level of skill with any musical instrument have a 70% chance of becoming infected at approximately two hours of exposure to live performances by 2112 infectees. Post-infection behavior in such individuals is identical to that of persons infected by exposure to the source disc. SCP-2112 came to the Foundation's attention on Redacted 1990. In 1982, when an hour-long nightly news broadcast produced by television 
station redacted in Portland. Emmy is Maryland, right? Or is that Maine? I think that's Maine. Maine? Okay. Yeah. I like how the child is the only one who said the answer. I mean, I, 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 I could be wrong, though. That's the thing. Uh, let me check. Got a port. Uh, oh, Pokemon says. Pokemon says Emmy is Maine. Oh, yeah. I, I was right. Holy shit. It is Maine. Holy shit. It's a miracle the child's right. Okay, look. I'm not stupid, okay? I know <laughs> things. MD is Maryland. Okay. Right. Objection. Right. Maine. Yeah. yeah. Mar- Maryland doesn't even have an E in it. Hush. Uh, Portland, Maryland. Uh, Portland, I said Maryland again. Portland, Maryland. <laughs> Portland, Hello, Maine. Well, Maryland. Hello, welcome. Hello, welcome. Hello, welcome to Portland, Maryland. Here, know. the only thing we eat is fucking bad. Concrete. Concrete. Yeah. Good luck. Anyway. You, you got this right. I believe in you. Thank you. Portland. It is a new year. <laughs> it is a clean slate. Yeah. Portland, now. Maine was observed to consist entirely of three of the network's broadcast personnel identify themselves as uh, by Tor and the Snow Dogs, performing a live rendition of Rush's 1981 album Moving Pictures. The overwhelming majority of commercials aired during the broadcast rather than advertising any product or service, additionally portrayed various local businessmen and politicians performing fragments of Rush songs. With varied degrees of skill, upon investigation, it was found that a performance by a trio of infectees, broadcast on local station Redacted five days later, had caused a radi- rapid spread of SCB-2112 infection throughout the Portland metro area, and that approximately 73% of the region's live music venues had booked Rush tribute bands to perform the following night. Implementation of procedure Wartam 673, followed by aerial dispersal of class E amnestics throughout the area, was deemed necessary to prevent further spread. Current models indicate that in the event of an unchecked SP2112 outbreak, the phenomenon would reach pandemic status within three weeks of the formation of the first tribute band. The members of Rush in interviews conducted by the Foundation have claimed no knowledge of or involvement in the creation of SP-2112. And there you go. Uh, okay, so this thing can actually spread quickly. Mm-hmm. Bass. Shut up! Uh, that's my favorite musical interest instrument, Patrick. My... I, don't know, I don't know why you're so upset. My favorite musical instrument is the pumpkin seed bass. I hate all of you. No, are you are you making fun of Bright? Yeah. Yes. Rockman does make a point. It Bright? is it is harmless, but it it spreads really quickly. So it's worse. maybe it just seems harmless because it hasn't spread that far before. Real real talk. Real talk. Most TikTok trends or like TikTok challenges are more dangerous than this. Do you remember the cinnamon challenge? That wasn't yes. a TikTok thing, but Yeah, like most most internet challenges like that are more dangerous than this. Mm-hmm. Has anyone heard of the NyQuil challenge? Shut up. Uh yes, uh... I've also heard of NyQuil chicken. Oh yeah, I forgot that was a thing. Yeah, what about the bullet ant challenge? Has anyone heard of that? No, no, no. Stuff like that doesn't even phase me anymore. Whenever I see it, I'm just like, you know what? You live your best life. You live your best life. Good luck. (laughs) However long it's gonna last after you after you overdose on Nyquil. (laughs) Also, does everyone know what the bullet ant challenge is? Isn't it? You find a bullet ant. And you get bitten by a bullet ant. Yeah, and you know how bad it is? Uh, it feels like you're being shot. Yeah, literally. That's I mean, I, I couldn't, I could, oh wow, I couldn't figure out that, that its bite was similar to that of being shot based solely upon the information oh. provided. 
Oh, Borkhorn looked in a little bit more into the SCP. Borkhorn says, this is something I saw in the addendum. The SCP explained why it's key, why it's keter, why, and this is what it says, what it does pres present, however, is a severe existential threat to the entirety of human culture, the arts, and all forms of creative work whatsoever. That's true. Cultural will just become rush bands, lol, says Bookworm. Yeah, that would get so boring. Yeah. Thanks, Bookworm. Well, for... ex except for people like me who yeah. wouldn't go to one of those things. Yeah, thanks, Bookworm, for being a great SCP researcher. <laughs> I feel like I would have brought that up, but I was yeah. too busy mocking you for calling the electric bass. A bass. Yeah. So where should we put mm -hmm. this? Because it can be really rapid. I'd say world changing. Yeah. It's not going to kill anyone, but the world will become very, very boring. Mm -hmm. As well as very white. In, also, in terms of like mm -hmm. the, uh, of the music. Also, yeah. look, it's everyone. nothing but rush. We did it, everyone. The list is complete. Of season it's one finally... of Keter Tier Listing. Finally fucking uh, over. Is that really one season? This is the first season, yes. It's over. Now to... Everyone... I'll, I'll, take, I'll take a shot to that. Hell yeah. You are not I'll taking a no. shot. You're too young. A non-alcoholic shot, okay? Fuck it. You know what, Dragon? I'm drinking alcohol, too. No, I'm kidding. No, Brian! I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You'll get yourself killed. <laughs> I'm kidding. Look, at least if I do it, it's a crime. Girl. If you do it, you you could literally die. I, I Which is also a crime. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> it's, against, it's against TOS to die on Look, stream, right? Let's Wait. be realistic. If anyone does it, then they can die. That's just... That, that, that that's just alcohol in general. Look, it says in, in all caps, great first season, everyone. Clap, 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 clap. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. We finally got through it all. I think the one that Hatchet disliked the most was the emoji one. Mm -hmm. I can see why. In, Where... in terms of, like, in terms of sheer, like, <laughs> the SCP Foundation was objectively evil in this instance. Yes. Uh, like, that is the worst one I can think of off like, the top of like my head. Like, doing a, a complete homicide of the Japanese race. <laughs> uh? Yeah, that happened in that SCP. The vast majority That's... of Japanese people had to be killed within that SCP yeah. because of emojis. <laughs> because yes. the SCP Foundation... <laughs> Figured people using emojis was so fucking dangerous, they needed to engage in the big G. Big G. Well, this is gonna get clipped. Yeah. Right, not right. Hatchet, you know what the big G means, right? It, it, in my not in this context, not in this context. I don't know what it means outside of this context. Big G usually refers to God. <laughs> And then, and then the foundation in the name of God. I mean, if you look at some of the stuff that he's done, that's not too far off. You know, like flooding orphans. I think yeah. orphans. <laughs> oh my God. I approve. <laughs> flooding orphans. No way. Okay, I could I could interpret that one of two ways. Either A, interpret that as you're mentioning the prospect of the fact that there most certainly would have been orphans who died in the Great Flood. Mm -hmm. Or B, I get the image in my head of just a way, like a tsunami wave of babies <laughs> covering the earth. <laughs> <laughs> that would be Pika's greatest fear. <laughs> Pika just looks out the window on that day and is like, God is dead. And they killed them. <laughs> the babies. The babies killed God. God damn it, you motherfucker. The, the babies, they killed God. Don't you understand? <laughs> oh, I might also put it in any screen. It, it took us so long to finish it. The new year has finally actually begun. Yeah. 
So no, hold on. I want to see how long did it take us to to finish it. When did I first post a video on it? Because I know the first video I did on it was the exact day of stream, so we could find out. Mm. Let's see. September 6, 2021. We almost did this for an entire year. Fucking hell. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of gaps of inactivity. Yeah, but still, mm -hmm. we did it for so long. That was, that was definitely something. Now it won't take as long, so we'll only put 30 SAPs on each list. You say we as if anyone here except for you uh, formatted formatted that list. Who the hell is we? I don't speak French. Why are we saying we? Fuck you, Pika. <laughs> we're, oh talking about a, we're talking about a tsunami wave of babies flooding over where you live and the first thing you come in here to say is a dumb pun about French? <laughs> oh no, I've been here the entire time. I'm just... Well, yeah, well, yeah but you That's didn't say thing. anything... You didn't say anything about the baby tsunami. I don't have any comments about it. I'm just sitting here. Wait, really? Just thinking. Wait, Bookworm, hmm. Bookworm says it's te uh, technically over a year, 15 months or so. Yeah, Since... you said you started it in September of 2021. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's mm -hmm. right. It would be over a year. Holy shit. <laughs> I think the main reason it also takes long is because some SCPs are really long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, as I was going to say, yeah. in terms of, like, the SCP that's been read out this year, or this this season, yeah. um, that is like the most objectively evil thing, it's the emoji one. But in terms of the SCP that I hated the most, mm -hmm. fucking goddamn fucking German party robot that's <laughs> it's basically it's basically become a meme that you hate that robot i hate that thing so fucking much why is it not why is it not in the safe class it's become a meme that you hate it you can There's, never stop it from being a meme i words cannot describe how much i despise that scp i thought you would also say say that one about the sun where the sun is just completely normal and we toss d class into it Oh, I don't give a shit about that. The SCP Foundation has done way worse than throw people into the sun. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Did, do we need to bring up the emoji one again? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I just thought of something. You know how 610 operates like it's like a hive mind right now. Yeah. What if 610 was in when day breaks? Who would be in control? Uh... <laughs> that would be a really fucky situation. <laughs> no, I mean... I... I don't know. Like, that is hard to determine. Because the flesh is mainly, like, messed up in all, all ways. Well, that's the thing, like, what, like, if it's a hive mind, who's controlling it is kind of irrelevant. It's a hive mind. It's all one thing. I am the hive mind. I was kind of but, thinking, no, what, I was thinking, of, I would the sun affect 610? Oh, um, uh, maybe? Probably, yeah. Then I would like, think they would probably go underground then. Child, yeah. I'm pretty sure if you were a hive mind, you would be smarter. <laughs> I am smart. Fuck and you. Actually, now that I think about I'm it, they, they technically already no, have... smarter. Uh, Hatchet, I, yeah, now that I think smarter. about it, I'm not, I'm, not sure if, <laughs> I'm not sure if I told you this, Hatchet, but they already do have an underground system that the Foundation well, monitors. Well, yeah, I know that. Yeah. So technically, they could avoid when day breaks. They just stay underground. 
just chill underground, live in the underground flesh pits. Yeah. Oh, I also forgot there's like a giant baby fetus creature in the underground. Uh, wait, what? Oh, yeah, that's the thing with 610. There's a giant baby fetus creature. Oh, baby. Baby, literally, baby. And it destroyed one of the SCP drones. Less baby. Murder baby. Murder baby. <laughs> anyway, choose. Yes, a baby. Anyway, uh, no, oh not you. Gosh. Bookworm, last words, go. Yeah, I don't know why, but, like, SCP-610 still fascinates me how the document changes every so often to show that it's, like, getting stronger and more terrifying. E. That's why it's one of my favorite SCPs, because it is just such an interesting thing. And it also, like, shows how, how virus would operate in real life, like, viruses evolve in real life. They don't evolve into a fungus, though. Right, they I don't do that. But, like, it's, it's, it's literally what a virus would do eventually they fall over time, just not into a fungus. They get stronger, that's why we get new vaccines and everything. Mm -hmm. That's why I really like it. Because it's feels a little real. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's just an itty bitty bit. Yeah. It's just a little bit of uh, believability mixed into the whole fucking flesh pit monster creatures. Wait, I, I thought about it. What would, what would happen if six... Uh, uh, okay. Give me a second. Look what would happen if 610 existed in real life? Because yeah. we've already dealt with a pandemic and saw how people were really stupid. Think something tells death. yeah i don't know that's that's the thing but like a part of what i think fuels a lot of the um uh a lot of the uh issues surrounding uh like anti-maskers and shit yeah comes from like the virus we're looking at in comparison to like other conceivable viruses being fairly fairly tame yeah like something tells me that if like maybe this is just my optimistic hope for humanity but something tells me if a literal zombie skin disease that can just be er very easily demonstrated to cause blatant physical changes within minutes. Mm -hmm. I I I want to keep hope alive <laughs> that even the stupidest humans would piece together they need to stop that. Yeah. And so far the only way to stop it was fire. Burn, baby, burn. Alright, bookworm, we're ready. Go ahead. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow Bright so you will be notified when the new season of Keter Tier List drops. I'm like a drowning also give thing. money. <laughs> why why would you know what that sounds like? Well I've watched Two. a couple of chew streams. Good point. Oh, but those aren't infants. It said the word keter in a very English way and it disturbs me. Eater. <laughs> It said Kater. Keter. It said Keter. Oh, Keter. Oh Keter. That's what the stars were. It's Keter. It's not two T's. It's one T. <laughs> Why? I mean, I mean, I've heard it pronounced Keter, but it's it's main. But it's mainly pr pronounced as Keter. Is what is great yeah. word. It just slightly bothers me. It's like I understand if someone else says it in like different country of origin, or or if that's how yeah. they speak, whatever. But like it, it, it does irk me a bit <laughs> because that's not how you say it. <laughs> anyway, the bookworm said, "Remember to like, subscribe, and follow Price so you can be notified when a new s season of Keter to your listing drops. Also, give money if you can. Show development isn't cheap. Oh my God, bookworm! <laughs> yeah. 
show development isn't cheap. <laughs> That's amazing. Look, I love it. All right, two last words go. Happy New Year, and I'm um, just as a warning, the future sucks. <laughs> How do you know? Pika doesn't know. They're just being jaded. Oh, Pika. There's a, there's a pretty there's a pretty notable precedent. Hatchet. Why are you Debbie Downers? For wait, my name is not Debbie. What? Anyway, are you Hartwell Walter White? I I am I am realism mouse. Anyway. No, you're not. You're a <laughs> I am re I am realism I am realism mouse. Also, I gave birth to a dragon's child. Anyway, uh dragon last words go. Um mix blueberry mix blueberry flavoring with uh tea and it tastes really good. Uh why? Why not? Sorry, exit out. It tastes good. Hey, blueberry. I fucking... Blueberries are good. <laughs> hey, Chu, Brooklyn says this. Also am a type of mouse that doesn't exist in the real world. A Pikachu. Yellow <laughs> mouse. <laughs> no, someone just put mustard on Pika. That's why he's yellow. <laughs> you're not allowed to mustard Pika like you're getting ready to eat them. <laughs> well, anyway. wait, wait, wait. No, Chew, no. Chew might appreciate I will, that. I will. <laughs> I will banish you to the shadow realm. And do it. And bitch. you see, the confirmation that Chew might appreciate that comes in the fact that Chew reacted like that. Pika. Oh my God! What is this degeneracy? I'm looking at on Twitter right now. Buddy, you someone, can't. Oh. Someone has a slice of pizza, and it's literally nothing but chunks of pineapple on it. Yeah, that's good. Anyway, uh, Jiri, last words go. Uh, I hope your year goes well, and uh, just remember the virus is still going, and try not to get. All right. Adurna, last words go. Um, yeah, the virus is still happening, so if you can, please wear a mask. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> um, also, like, subscribe. I'm glad you're out of that, like, hellhole, Bray. Um, mm -hmm. Right, it's a bird. God damn it. Hatchet, last words go. <laughs> In the great words of Cleopatra. Oh dear. World War II was pretty cringe, fam. <laughs> I don't oh think that Cleopatra was around during World War II. Fun that's, historical fact. That's the joke, bitch. Oh. Dumbass. I've I've gone down the rabbit hole of really loving, like really stupid quotes that you could find online that are just like obviously not something the person quoted said. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I I I brought this up in a different server that Aderna and Pachu are, uh, in with me, and one of the people in said server, uh, in response to my mentioning my growing fondness for those sorts of jokes. Uh, sent a meme that oh I just uh let's see uh it it shows a picture of Albert Einstein and it says play with my blank but don't play with my emotions quoting Sung Su. <laughs> why why would you bring that meme up? <laughs> <laughs> why, would you, why would your friend mention it? Hmm? Anyway, I want to do my last words. All right. In the great world of Alaska, 
polar bears marry penguins? <laughs> no. No, they don't. <laughs> well, it's not Earth. It's it's Alaska. It's a planet. Oh my god. <laughs> What? Uh, can we get some fact checkers in on that cut, on that cut, shit? Cut, cut the transmission. Cut the transmission. <laughs> I I decided to bring that joke back. I I remember when I first did that, I literally broke hatchet to laughter. <laughs> Let me uh, off this wild ride. Uh, but anyway, uh, I would I would like to oh. direct everyone who is above the age of eighteen. Uh, to go look in X-rated. Uh, Bright, you can send that to Bookworm. <laughs> yeah. Also, Bookworm says, it is completely true. Our experts have viewed this world with their own eyes. <laughs> and they're talking about the world of Alaska. <laughs> I, I, I like how Bookworm's my enabler. <laughs> uh. anyway danger noodles i hope you enjoyed and i hope to see you for your next mission next time and i hope you definitely enjoyed the first season of keto tier listing it took us a very long time to finish it <laughs> the electric bass <laughs>